Hi, we just completed the uh, Docker image and Docker file creation uh, workflow video. So if, if you haven't seen the video so far, please check back to those because this video is building on the previous ones. So we have a getting started video already, plus we have two videos on, on creating Docker images with the Docker file specifically. And this video is about creating a PHP Docker image that has a composer installed and with composer we're going to install the slim micro framework and we're going to create a very basic page with slim so we're going to create a docker image a custom docker image that can act as your server for your slim projects and this is going to be basic so it's a beginner's tutorial we're going to be not we're not going to really fine tune the stuff the most important the point here is that if you are a beginner, you will understand how you can build your own image for PHP Composer. And then, you know, you can fine tune and sophisticate that further uh, in your project uh, if you need to. And this video is about PHP and the next one will be about Node.js creating the same thing or similar thing uh, for the Node.js server. We're going to create an Express server. So let's get started. Let's go to Terminal in my playground and let's create a directory and let's call this like ph php slim tut and let's go to that directory okay and we're gonna touch the docker file immediately and start up an editor okay so in order to do that we need to start out from a, a docker image so we need to find the right docker image to build this project on so we have to go to docker store search for php and this is the official php docker image and uh, the question is you know which is the right image that you know that we choose for this little experiment or for this little project and the version number here denotes the number the php version number and you know for this simple case we can pick any of these but let's go with the latest one so 7.1 will be fine and then we have various options so this is for the command line this is alpine based and this includes an apache web server and uh, i would prefer to go with this one so i want to go with that and what we got to do now which is docker pool php and this tag and i have done that already so as the docker images if we go to docker image you see that i already have a php official apache image maybe the the uh, yeah this is one version higher a minor version higher anyway please pull that image and i, I stay with mine because i don't want to take some time pulling another image so we got php and apache so what is the idea here the idea is that by default this image when you start up a container from this image it will run an apache web server and uh, you can use that so if you look at the docker file this is my usual process that if i want to use an image for something i look at the docker file this is something that i really strongly advise that you read other people's docker files it gives you a lot of insights and there's a lot of learning in that so it's based on debian which now we know what is the linux operating system underneath and now we know which is which are the tools that we're going to use uh, we know that we're going to use apt get to install uh, new stuff and so on and we look at it look inside you see what are the libraries that, that are getting installed you can check out the configuration all these things here and if you really think that this looks scary all the keys and all the stuff then uh, let me tell you that please try and read as much as possible out of this and uh, the important points are anyway listed here so there is a work dir. this is going to be the working directory so when we do something when we start up a container we will be ending up in this directory and this is going to be the directory that we will use to put our source code in because this is the directory that this image will finally serve so this is where you put simply put you put your index.html or index.php into this directory in your container when you run that it exposes port 80 so we need to map port 80 if you want to uh, access the web server on the host machine and it's gonna run 
Apache in the foreground. So if you start this, con this container or start a container from this image, you're gonna get a running web server on port 80. So that's the point. So let's go for it. So the idea is that we would like to use the slim PHP framework. So what was that? If you never use that, it's very simple. So let's get started with that. Let's say you want to start a project with a slim framework. You get this piece of code and you want to set up an environment to run this piece of code for in, as a first step. So then we say, okay, it is recommended that you use the composer dependency manager to, to, to install the slim framework. Composer is a PHP dependency manager, and now we're going to install Composer into our uh, image. Okay, so installing Composer, it's on getcomposer.org slash download. This is, these are the steps to install Composer on your machine. So let's see, let's see what, we do, what we are doing. We want to run this piece of code, and as a first step, we want to install Composer, which is a dependency manager, and then we're going to use Composer to install Slim, and the one that once that's done, this piece of code should be working. So let's install Composer into our PHP image. Docker images. So we're going to take this PHP image here, and we're going to create another image where we have Composer available. So let's say, let's uh, have a look inside this image. So PHP 7.1.2. If you remember the, uh, the steps that I had, then uh, you remember that this is the stuff that I usually do, that I, I go, inside the, um, go inside the image so that I kind of talk and type at the same time, it seems. So anyway, so this is what I do. I go into the shell and play around with the image in the, uh, in the first place and then I experiment with the steps that I want to put into my Docker file and then I put them into my Docker file. Okay, so I'm inside in the shell and you see the Active Directory is the same thing that we saw on the, on the documentation here. Where was it? Here. So this is the working directory. It's the same thing. So let's list the contents. It's empty right now, but we're going to add some stuff into it. So let's install Composer. So what it says that you go to your terminal and execute these steps. So let's do it. We copy and paste these steps into our terminal. And yeah, you always need to pick this code from here because it has some uh, validation code inside that changes all the time. Okay, now you see something is happening and uh, we're on the last line. So it seems that we have installed Composer. So that stuff that is online seems to be working. So that means that for our new project, we want to create a Docker file so that we can reproduce that image all the time. We create an image that we can use for the entire project. So that means that we start from PHP 712 Apache, I, I believe. Uh, yep. Yeah. And then we run all this stuff here. And you remember, so creating the Docker file, we put these things into one line. And uh, okay, just in a minute. So what I'm doing now, I'm simply reproducing the steps that we did so far. Okay. Okay, so if we build this Docker image, then we're going to end up at the same state as we are right now in, in this uh, running container. So let's try to use Composer. If I say Composer, Composer command was not found. So what can you do? What you could do now, and this is what I suggested before, if you don't know Composer, you can of course always go to Google and uh, look for answers online. So let's see what is the uh, what is the solution. I have the solution by the way. So um, yeah, this is not the uh, not the nicest actually. So anyway, let me I have um, made some notes here. 
so let's fix this stuff so we just put our entire user local bin so put that the composer file here if i'm running composer now now composer is available so let's add this step to our docker file here so now we have composer available which means that now we can run composer and install stuff so how does that work if you run composer what you need you need a, a, a json file that is called composer.json and in that json file you add your dependencies so let me quickly copy and paste my dependencies so it's a json file it's a json format and you require in the slim package basically so what's happening now we need to copy this composer json into our image in order to make it work so right now what we can do we can leave this container and uh, we can try and build our image so so the first thing that we need to do is we need to install composer of course and then we need to copy the composer json file into our image so that we can build it so how does that work that works in a way that um yeah let me copy the step here so the uh, this is the local file composer.json here and we copy that into the working directory that we have seen before this is the working directory of the official php image and after that once we copy the composer.json file what we need to do we need to run composer install and that means that composer will look into the active working directory which is this one if there is a composer json file which we just copied here and then it will install all the requirements that are listed in that composer json file okay so let's try and build this image so let's go to our little tutorial and say docker build and we give it a tag as you remember from the previous tutorials so let's say php slim tooth 1.0 1.9 if you please and then let's say that we are building the current directory okay so these are the same step that we have done before it says do not run composer as root which is okay of course if you want to do this properly you set up a new user and so on marina it should be okay so we have built so far there is an error and i'm aware of this so don't worry the point is that i want to explain is that as you have seen i have i went into went into the shell tried the first steps i saw that they were working so i said okay let's go to the docker file and let's copy the the com composer json inside and let's try to build it and this is my experience that you know that this stuff works back and forth so you start in the shell then you put something together and then you try and run it and it turns out that it's not working so why is that it's not working because git was not installed it was not found because this package doesn't have git available so what we gotta do before we run composer install you remember the the cache stuff that we did so we, we keep using the cache we don't touch those steps but we just you go and add install here we install git and then we try and run composer install again so let's do this okay so now the build was successful so if i go docker images then you see that Eight seconds ago we have just built this php slim tooth image so it exposes port 80 as the base image it did before with the same working directory the only thing that changes is that we installed composer inside and then we use the comp copy the composer json file in there and then we install the composer packages so let's look into this to see what's inside because it's pretty interesting so um, okay 
and then 1.0 pin bash all right so we are inside and then if we list out the contents you see then you remember that this directory used to be empty and now we have composer json inside which is the same thing as we used to have there plus we have another composer lock which is the lock file the details uh, i can show it to you all the dependent stuff as well so all the versions of every package that is right now included here and um, let's the important thing is the vendor directory we go into the vendor directory and the vendor directory has the uh, the directories for the packages that are here that are installed like slim is already here plus it has a file called auto load php so the vendor directory contains all the third party packages that we just installed with composer and it has an auto load php and that file is something that we use to automatically load the third party packages so everything that is in this folder can be automatically included into the php code with auto load php and um, if we go back to our sample code you see that these guys will require in vendor forward slash auto load php immediately so that means that slim actually assumes that that folder and that file is there and it uses that to to actually bootstrap slim itself so so far we seem to be good and what's happening is that we have installed these third party packages into our image so that's in the image that's directly available okay so let's exit from here and say docker images and this is our new image so what we are supposed to be doing now we i think we are ready to to start up this image and see if we can serve the sample code if we can serve the sample page from this image so let me show that to you so let's create a file that we call index.php and uh, copy and paste the sample code inside index.php okay there we go and then what i want to do is to comment this out and create another route just for local host so for the base uh, route here and uh, let's simplify this thing here hello world from our new image okay so this is our custom docker image and we serve hello world from here and once we go to local host we should be seeing this message appear so how does that work in order to make this work we need to actually make sure that our index.php is inside our container so what we're going to do we're going to start up a container from the new image and we're going to map a volume the current directory we're going to map this volume into the working directory of the image so let's do that so let's say docker run and then we say let's copy the uh, let's map the working directory so the current directory into the working directory of the image which is uh, this one all right plus we have to map port 80 to port 80 and then we go like 1.0 so let's see what happens i start this up and uh, yeah let's go to localhost and we get an error message what's happening it says that vendor auto load php failed to open stream so what's going on we saw that the vendor folder was created and it was inside the image now i created a container and i have mapped my source code into the working directory so if i open up another part of here let's say docker ps and let's have a look inside the running container which is this dazzling uh, whatever the name is i'm sorry okay so docker exec 
slash di bash ok ok so I'm here and let's list it out so you see that the docker file is there composer json is there index.php is there but the vendor directory is not there it used to be there in the image and it's still in there in the image but it's not in the container why is that the reason for this is that i have overwritten i have mapped the this folder the contents of this folder on top of this content of the same directory inside the image so the i have basically made the vendor folder disappear because I, I mapped another folder on top of that so the container has this this version of this folder but the image has a different version where the vendor directory is still available and this is a common issue this is a common issue with the node modules directory under node.js and also the the vendor directory under php that if you map your source code on top of uh, of the of the working directory then everything that was installed previously would disappear and i show you how to fix that so we can fix this if i stop this stuff here and instead of mapping uh, only this directory i will do add another map and the mapping would be yeah just let me just copy and paste the working directory and underneath i will copy vendor so if i if i map this you see that something already changed because on the host machine suddenly the vendor directory has appeared so what i what i did was i mapped this directory on top of the working directory of the image so this is going to be coming from our host machine but at the same time i also mapped the vendor directory of the image into the container i don't know if it makes much sense to you but it definitely does make sense and uh so the vendor directory is also <coughs> is now available and and also visible the contents are not visible but they are there and if you look inside that container then let's say docker exec ti zen whatever blackwell okay and then if we list this out now you see that the vendor directory is there and we also see that the vendor directory has its content so inside the container the vendor directory is not empty on the host machine you don't see the contents but in the in the uh, in the container it has its content so you have to basically double double map your volumes to make this scenario work and then if i go back to my local host then you see that this is the hello world from our new image is already there it's here so the stuff that we created is working so what have we done <laughs> so what we did we created from the apache php apache image from the official image we created our, our custom image with this docker file we installed composer inside with uh, this code that we took from the composer website we created the composer json file to manage the dependencies and we added slim into that file we copied the file into the working directory we installed git because it was required and then we use composer install to install whatever we specify in this file okay so that means that if you add some stuff into the composer json file you will need to rebuild your image to make it available also you know inside your running containers and you have to run a uh, start a new container then so we have created this stuff and we have now a container running based on this image with slim installed so let's check out something else first of all let's say that you don't want to have index.php just like, like here in the root of this project but you want to create something like a public folder okay so you want to create a public folder and you want to move index.php into that public folder plus then vendor is just one level uh, higher so 
we include when the event the autoload PHP from this directory. So we have to change this piece of code. But the point is that we have created, we have moved our index.php into the public directory. So if I go back to our browser, then you see that this is basically forbidden. And then if I go to public, it's available. So what I want to do, I don't want to see public here. I just want to change the, the document root of my Apache web server into, into this public folder. So how does that work? Okay, so let's see how we can change the document root of, of our Apache web server uh, for this container. So the container is running here and uh, let's say Docker PS and let's try and see how we can change that from uh, from public from for the public how can we point the document to the to the public subfolder okay so let's say docker exec we go inside this one and this uh home what is this okay let's copy this <laughs> fantastic name here and then go into bin bash so right now i'm inside and let's see what's in the uh, in the Apache sites enable zero. This is the default configuration. So the default configuration points to this folder. This is a document root. And what I want to do is that I want to change this to the same directory slash forward slash public. So that's what I want to do. And I have a uh, I have one one liner here that does exactly this so let me copy it here so what it does this is you know if you don't know this this is sad look at it it's one of the one of the oldest unix tools uh, available this is basically a stream editor so what we are doing now we are taking this file and we are editing that on the fly replacing this uh, this sorry this regular expression with this regular expression you see that the content of the uh, the directory points to another place. So we run this, we cat the same file again, and now you see that the document root has changed. So the statement should work, and what we could do actually, we can use this statement to rebuild our Docker image, and this is what we're gonna do. But another option that you can do is that you can actually edit, so you can, uh, so. So what you, okay, so let me show you. So what you can do, you can go to your file and then say run and uh, sorry. So we can say run, copy the statement here and uh, we change the document root as we are building the image. Another option that we have is that we can take the content of this file, so the end, we can copy and paste this entire thing, create our own configuration file, and then copy that file into the image when we are building. Also inside the Docker file, we would have something like uh, copy, and then we would copy that uh, file into this location. So we'll basically override the default configuration. That's another option. It's, it's a matter of uh, decision making. It's your decision which way you go. If you want to be the complex configuration, you better create your own configuration file and copy that inside the image. If you want to do just small stuff, then you can go like this. And so now what we're going to do, we're going to rebuild our image and then see what happens. But right now, let's try something else. So what we did so far was that we have actually already updated the inside the container. So if you look at inside the container, the document root already points to the public folder. And if I do a listing here, then you see there's a public folder here and that public folder contains our index.php. So it's not gonna be working. So if I refresh this, it's gonna still point, it's pointing to public and localhost is still forbidden. And that is because we need to restart the web server. And, you know, for the reason that there, there should be only one process running in the container, this is our main process. So what we can do, we can restart the Docker container. So let's say Docker PS and then go Docker 
restart and then take this uh, name of this container and now we are restarting that container and if we are lucky then you see right now we have restarted the container and now the document root points to the public folder because this code is working okay so what does that mean so that means that if you want to apply changes to your docker image and you created an image you are running a container out of that and you're changing that container inside then you can actually change the container restart the container and immediately see the changes wow which is amazing so that means you know if you if you remove this container you, the next container that you are starting from the image that will not have this kind of change so that change will disappear unless you put that into your docker file but anyway for you know experimental purposes you can actually do this you can you can go to a running container run docker exec go to the shell apply some changes then you restart the container and you can check if those changes are working so this is really this is really interesting stuff right so let's see so what i can do so now it, it points to the public folder so let's stop this and uh, let's re rebuild let me look for it build. okay this is the one so let's rebuild that image and you see now we are rebuilding we change the document root and let's say docker ps a yeah we have removed everything so let's start up a container again and now i'm starting up the container so i'm going to my local host and it's working so right now we are serving local host from the public directory which is pretty awesome so this is the way that we actually created our own image and then installed some of our stuff and then we also added some configuration into that image so it's configured to run differently so let's go back to the original example and the original example is this one here hello forward slash hello slash name so let's try if that works so localhost hello mark and it was not found on this server why is that that is because let's say it should be on the documentation actually on the on the getting started guide somewhere but uh, i'm not sure if i can find that immediately but i can find it to you because i want you to see that point yeah this is this is okay and um so ah here so that means that in order to make the the routing work so routing means you know that the address is taken not from the the file structure but we we tell PHP and Apache that it should take all these routes from the from the slim server so we redir redirect everything to, the, to, to, to be handled by slim and in order to do that we have to create an HT access file and turn on the rewrite engine so this is what we're gonna do the code is just here so what we gotta do we go to our public HTML we create a new file code HD access all right we copy and paste everything inside which is fine and then what we also got to do we have to enable mod rewrites in our docker image let's try and enable mod rewrite in the container as we did before and then we're going to come to the docker file and add the lines that are needed so we have already copied the required logic or, or lines into our htaccess so what i want to do is just go into the shell again with this uh, 22 uh the id oh, just okay let's go with the name blissful boot okay 
free bash. All right. So the command to enable mod rewrite is just this one. So we run this line and uh, yeah, that is the one we, we have done that. So actually mod rewrite was enabled. So we leave the container and then we say Docker restart and then please full boot. Okay, so now we have restarted Blissful Boot. And if I go here and refresh this place, it, hello Mark. So you see, I have changed my container, I have enabled mod rewrite, and now I'm testing it by restarting the container. So it seems to be working, I have done a good job. So I add my line to my Docker file. Bang. And now, yeah, I think the best, way, best idea right now is to rebuild that image and restart a container out of that and uh, docker ps-a yeah we are removing that thing okay so let's rebuild rebuilding is just uh, here okay i'm rebuilding okay that's nice and then let's start up again uh, docker run blah 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 this okay so I'm running again and let's refresh. Hello Mark or hello students. Hello students. So we have also enabled mod rewrites. We have updated the Docker image accordingly. We have HTXS in place and now our routing is, is working well. And if I just uh, go back to localhost, then the, the other image also is still working. So, you know, as you make progress with your stuff, then, you know, you can use this method to actually, you know, work with you or your way through and build up your Docker file. So you can, you can change the container also during the runtime. And then by restarting it, you can immediately check the, the result of your actions. And then, of course, you should be building the Docker file. So add every step to your Docker file and reproduce that as much as possible. And I think it's not a waste of time to rebuild the image because you know you don't want to miss any step. But quick testing is uh, is a good idea to go into the into the shell of the running container and and try some stuff. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. What I also usually do, if we are talking about Composer right now that if I want to add some other package here, uh, then I can you know just go add some more lines, whatever here. And then I can uh, I can actually go into because you know this thing, the, the composer JSON is immediately mapped into my container. So if, as I change my composer JSON, those changes will be available in the in the running container immediately. So then I can go inside the running container, the container exec, go into the shell and do a composer install. So I don't even need to rebuild the entire image to test some of the packages, install some of the packages, because it happens, you know, you install one package, you test it out and you say, okay, this is not the package that I want. And then, you know, you just, <laughs> you just remove it and then you try another package and you create a mess, you work like that. And then once you find the right package, then you put that into your Composer JSON. So you leave the, the final package in there and then you rebuild the entire image. So this could also be an option to, to install Composer packages also on the fly inside the running container. That's another option. So what we did today, we created a very simple Docker file with a very simple image starting out from PHP and Apache web server. We installed the Visual the Composer and then we created a JSON file, added some packages for Slim, installed the required stuff, and then we played around, changed the document route, and we basically got you started with the Docker image for the Slim framework. So I wish you good luck uh, and uh, stay tuned because there is gonna be more. I'm gonna also set up a Node.js image similarly, just a base image, very simple, like this one, not too many steps. But, you know, if you want to learn about Docker images and Docker files, please read other people's Docker files, read Docker files on GitHub. <laughs> There's a lot available out there. And please be prepared to have a Node.js video after this one. And later on, I'm going to have a video about Docker file instructions. 
like copy, like copy and add an entry point and the CMD and these kind of things to understand a little bit better how they work. And um, I also want to give you another video about sharing your Docker files because I'm receiving a lot of questions, you know, how you can share the Docker file, how you can say share Docker images. So you can do both. You can share the Docker file on GitHub. You see everybody's doing that and you can share your images on the Docker store as well. And let's see, you know, maybe I'm, what I'm thinking is that I'm going to share some of these images on Docker store and uh, I show you how I did that. I haven't done that yet, so uh, I will have to try and, and see how that works. So this is the plan. And after Docker 5, we're going to go to Docker Compose, go to Docker Networking, Docker Machine and Swarm. And oh, it sounds like a lot. And uh, I hope I'm going to have the time because I'm really enjoying that. And uh, thank you for the nice comments and, and thanks for watching.